Hello fellow guitar geeks. In this video, I'm taking a look at this, the Itchy 10 from Ibanez. <laughs> It's part of the new Quest series from Ibanez, and yes, it is headless, and yes, it is tiny. It's not just, well, it is small, it's not as tiny as it looks next to me. If I, if I take this Strat down, um, that's a standard Strat, that's the new uh, Player Plus from Fender. That's how big it is compared to the Strat, so I also make Strats look small. It isn't small. But it is small, but not that small. It is the signature model from Ichika Nito, and Ichika Nito is an absolute monster of a player. He plays super technical, tapping, fluid, I don't know, music that uses the guitar in a way completely differently to I think I'd ever be able to play. So, if you've searched this or found this somehow through Itchy, because it's the Itchy signature, and you're expecting to see someone play like Itchy, then um, I, I hate to disappoint you, and no disrespect to either you or Ibanez or, or Itchy, but I won't be playing like that in this video. And what I did at the beginning of the video is probably pushing my abilities to the maximum. What I will be doing is seeing if this is just for superhuman tapping machines like Itchy, or if the rest of us human guitar players can use it as well. So even though it is a headless guitar with a brand new body shape, all this proprietary hardware, it's also just a three single coil guitar with master volume, master tone, and some switches. So it makes absolute sense to me to kind of pretend that it's a Strat. It kind of feels like a Strat. It kind of it, it kind of looks like a Strat. Firstly, if you if you if you were to cover that and the headstock, and you didn't know that, you'd say, well, that's a Strat, of course. Before we go any further, I need to ask you to please leave a like or a dislike on the video. Give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Interact with me in some way. Let's make it, you know, a, a me and you thing rather than just a, you know you sitting there and watching and me sitting here and talking to you from the past. Give a thumbs up or a thumbs down, whichever you choose. Go. If you look around on the back, you can see there's some more ergonomic stuff going on there. So let's take a close up look at it. So on the front of the guitar, we've got the truss rod adjuster. We've got the master volume, master tone, a five way switch just here, like a Strat, the alter switch, which has come from the AZ and the new AZES. We've got bridge, middle, neck. We've also got the new monotune bridges. Although you find this kind of bridge normally on multi-scale guitars, this is not a multi-scale guitar, and neither are the ones in the Quest series with the slanted frets. They're just slanted. In case you have one of these, or you want to know what's going on with these things, I've made a second video with this guitar, and in that video I go into how to change the strings and how to set up the guitar a little bit. So if you fancy that, there's a card just there, and you can watch that at some point, or you know, find it on YouTube through the magic of searching for it. Also on the front, we've got two strap buttons, and these exist for two reasons. Number one is to wear it on a strap at this height, or at this height, so it's a bit higher if you want to get into your technical playing. And the other reason that when you put it down, it stands on those two strap buttons, and you can lean it. Cool, huh? Let's take a look at the back, which is also ergonomic. There we go, ergonomic. I'm going to crack that open and see what's going on inside there. Right, moment of truth. What's going on? Lots of stuff. Okay, we need a bit more close up of that. This looks like a very busy, but very tidy control cavity. So we've got a lot of cable in here, should we want to expand anything? And also most of this switching is down to the ultra switch and the AZ style switching, which I'll go into in a little bit. That might be conductive paint, I'm not sure. You've got a shielding on the back of the plate. Um, it looks good. No, no problems, no complaints there. The finish is vintage matte white, and I love it. It's my favorite color of all the new Quest series. The reason being is that I love the way it feels. It's not sticky like a gloss thing, and you can really hug it, and nothing's trying to take you away from playing it. Um, it it's an extremely comfortable guitar to play. Let's talk about the jack socket. The jack socket's just here on the underside of the guitar, which is fairly telly placement. Um, it's a really quality looking jack socket, and being there, you can of course wrap the cable around your strap or just let it hang loose. Let's talk about the neck. The neck is roasted maple, three piece, uh, sorry, roasted maple bubinga. Um, so we've got roasted maple on the sides. In fact, go back to that camera, that might be easier. 
We've got roasted maple, bobinga, and maple again on that side, and it's a wizard C neck. The feel of the neck is, um, it's not like wizard, like super thin uh, Ibanez RG or super shredder neck, although it isn't super fat either. It's, it's like, a, like a sort of modern C. Um, if you're used to playing strats, then you'll be used to playing something like this. Although it kind of feels smaller because it's, a, it's an optical illusion with the head not being there. It isn't. Speaking of which, it's also strat scale, 20, 25 and a half inches. So even though it looks smaller, if you've played a strat before, then you'll recognize the feel of this. Although, and Ryan at 60 Cycle Hum can, uh, can back me up or maybe take the credit for this, but um, because they're locked here and not going off to, to the respective machine heads that are not there, the string tension does feel a little bit different. It feels a bit more slinky. But regardless, I, I like it. Um, I, I've had a, a whale of a time so far. Also, it's got Jessica golden frets, and the fretwork is phenomenal. There's, there's no issues there whatsoever. That is a wonderful feeling guitar. The pickups are Ibanez own branded ones called the R1 pickup series, and they're all called R1. So I don't know if they're voiced for the position they're in or if they're all the same pickup. Also, this bridge pickup is not on like a Telecaster base plate. It's just a single core the same size as this. And I guess this extra routing is either for looks or to give the space for the cables that are there. They're all standard sizes. So if you did want to switch these pickups out and put some ones, some better ones or some more expensive ones in, then you're free to do so because there's nothing proprietary going on. It's just your bog standard pickup size. It's hard to convey the comfort of this instrument because normally when I'm making these videos, for example, I sit here and I'm thinking, I've got to put this guitar down. It's so heavy or it's bulkier in the way. This one is the opposite. Um, and I don't mind bigger guitars, or like normal guitars, but I start to feel it when making videos. And I've been sitting holding this for quite some time now, and you almost don't even notice it's there. In fact, let's weigh it. Now, normally I would hang the guitar on the machine head, but I can't do that because it doesn't have them. So I'm going to try and hold it there. Let's turn that on. I'll put it in kilograms, even though it's just in inches. Zero. And then... Don't get too nervous if it... 2.4 kilograms, 2.4 kilograms. So about a kilogram and a half lighter than a light Les Paul. Um, yeah, it's a light guitar. I had a little tip from Dan and Michael at Ibanez Germany, and because it's got no head, you can't really hang it on a hanger unless you use ukulele hangers. And then that fits in there apparently perfectly because there is a little a little purchase on there to be able to hang it slightly but don't try and hang that in, in one of these because if you did that it would fall off not that I did that I'm going to run through some sounds with the alter switch in this position meaning it's off so the pickups will operate in a standard strat way so if you know what a strat is and know how to operate in a strat you'll know what I'm doing with this I'm using the Archer Icon from J Rocket and the D20 amp from Rev. Uh, that's going into the Captor X and, and mics into your ears. That's also the first time I've heard of the pickups just compared to each other. And I'm surprised how much I like them because they're ceramic, which is something that I don't normally go for. And also they are house brand, Ibanez branded. So I wasn't expecting much, but I think that's really pretty good. Um, the bridge sounds 
not too ice picky. So that, by the way, the tone was on 10 for everything there. So I'll just run through some sounds with, with playing with the tone. <laughs> So you can hear the treble running off as well with the volume, but generally speaking, that volume and tone control, pretty much all you need. Um, in the second position, this one was really dark. It's just dark. That's not necessarily a bad thing, it's just dark. Middle is nice and spanky. Sorry, it's nice and spanky. Fourth position. quite there in the strat sort of terms, but it's it's almost there. I'm enjoying it, but I realize that I may not be coming across as enthusiastic, and that's because I'm being analytical, Andy, right now. And I'm really, really listening because when I plug into a Strat or a Les Paul or something like that, I, I kind of know what I'm expecting, and unless there's a huge surprise, that's what I get. And it's just a, a case of how good a Les Paul or how good a Strat or how good whatever it is. With this, I, I have no expectations. I don't know what to uh, reference it to or from. So I'm listening intently and feeling intently. And the thing that's just occurred to me is the guitar is so easy to play. It's, it's some people like to say it's talent. It plays like butter, um, which is a term that I don't normally use, but it, it plays, it doesn't get in the way. It's almost like um, a cheat code for guitar players. It helps you um, play the notes and find your way around the neck. There's nothing, it's just beautiful. If you like smooth wooden satin necks, you've got to feel at least this one. Um, I don't know about the other guitars in the Quest range, but this one is absolutely beautiful to play. Just like holding it. Let's talk about the alter switch, this switch just here. By switching this over changes what happens to this five-way blade selector. So for example, when I put it from, that was off, that's how we heard it already. Now when I turn it that way, we've got these two in series acting as a humbucker. So it's not going to sound like a Les Paul due to many reasons, which we won't discuss right now, but it does thicken up quite a lot. It's still, it's quite a dark sounding guitar, which is odd. I thought it would be quite bright because of the, the thin little weightless body. Putting it into position two with the alter switch on does nothing. So now we've put that from humbucker mode into just in parallel. So turning the switch on or off will achieve zero. Nothing. Position three with the alter switch on does exactly alter it. So like that, we've got the, the, the middle pickup as, as you'd expect. When you switch on the alter switch, we've got these and these two pickups kick in in parallel and this one's off. So uh, middle pickup, these two in parallel.
that's a really cool feature because if you've got something quite spanky, um, spanky please, switch it, and it kind of turns the tone on its head a little bit. All right, uh, position four with the alter switch does absolutely nothing. So it's as if the alter switch isn't there. Here we go. So moving on to position five, that does something with the alter switch. That turns these two into a humbucker. So very much like when we had position two with the alter switch on, we had these two as a humbucker. Switch it this way, and now we've got these two. Let's hear it. such a nice guitar to play. So regardless of the sounds, which I know are hard to translate across YouTube and whichever device you're listening on, please don't let it be your phone. Um, the feel of the guitar is really, really something else. It's a very, very um, easy guitar to play. And uh, it does have new strings on. I did put new strings on it. Um, apart from that, everything's stuck. And the reason I put new strings on it is because Jamie Humphreys broke the top E and then decided to manhandle the guitar and got his finger gunk all over it. So I couldn't review the guitar in the state it was in. So I got new strings. There are a few things I forgot to mention, such as it comes with a gig case, which is actually quite padded. Um, two pockets, two really good pockets. And compare that to the gig bag that came with the, with the Fender uh, Player Plus. This is a better gig bag. It's slightly more padded. Um, it's still not enough if you're gonna take it in a car on a flight, you know, long haul and put things on top of it, but it's a better one than Fender offered with the Player Plus. Uh, it's also rucksackable, which is a really cool feature of any guitar bag. Uh, there's a manual in there and stuff. The zips are nice, very nice zips. They're gonna last you a while. Ibanez written on the front. Ooh. Uh, also in there are the tools that you need to do the maintenance that you need, apart from a screwdriver. So all the Allen key stuff is included with the guitar. I've also got a handy little data sheet here that Dan put on there for me, and let's see if I've missed anything. Right, it's got a plastic nut. Whoops, missed that one. Um, and it's got... Oh yeah, woods. Let's talk woods. I did go over the neck, but I didn't go over the fact that the body is Nyota. Not your Nyota. I still can't say that. We've got bird's eye maple fretboard as well. I, I should have mentioned that, but you can kind of see it. Again, it adds to the look and the playability. And of course, the sound. It's also got what I think are glow in the dark uh, dots on the side. Sorry, luminescent, not glow in the dark. Let's be kind of scientific as I use my hand to make it dark. Yes, they are luminescent of the moon. Uh, so they'll glow up when you're on stage or in a dark room, for example, which you might be. This, is, this would make a great couch guitar. This, um, I'm sad it's going back. I really am because even though, you know, I've got enough, that's a really nice couch guitar because you can just sort of sit there and noodle and not poke anybody in the face. Okay, on to the review. Is it any good? Well, I'll tell you. It is a positive review mostly for the uh, Itchy 10. Uh, it, it doesn't sound really like a Strat. So at the beginning I was wondering if it just sounded like a three coil Strat style guitar does and it doesn't. It, it doesn't really have those signature Strat sounds. And I think that's mainly because this has no trem system. So not mainly, it's the fact it's got no head and a small body also certainly contributes to that uh, result. But the fact that it has no trem system is a major reason that if you're looking for uh, a Strat style sound, this might be it, but it might not get as close as you want. And while I'm on that subject, if they fitted a trem system to this, it would be brilliant. So maybe not to the Itchy Signature because it's his signature, but on a Quest series, if we could get some kind of trem system going on, um, I'd love to see that guitar. I think the pickups sound good. The quality of the instrument is second to none. I've been trying to find a fault with the finish or the fit or something like that. And I do know that this went to Gear Street, so it would have been checked, but you never know what can sneak through. Um, if I was really being picky, I'm not sure that that pickup there is supposed to be so tight to the body, but that's, that's me not knowing rather than it's a mistake. I think it is supposed to be that way. It just looks a bit odd. 
being pushed so far that way. I like the shape. I like. I love the feel. Um, I like the pick guard. I like that it goes to here. Uh, if you don't like anything about the looks of this guitar, then I'm surprised you've made it this far in the video, to be honest. But if you're thinking, hmm, that's interesting. I, I quite enjoy the sounds and I like the looks. Should I play one? Absolutely pick one up. You'll be surprised. Uh, I didn't think I'd gel this much with this guitar. And normally, as I said, I'm much more enthusiastic in my videos, but this one has been proper like analytical, what the heck is going on? Because I have almost no frame of reference. It's been really interesting. One thing I found out with, with Ryan, in fact, Ryan gets the credit for this, is that you can do something with this guitar you can't do with other guitars. So I'll demonstrate. Turn it on and then you can play like a normal guitar. <laughs> And you can go, and this, and then you can go, or, you know. Now I'm aware that what I just did was not musical at all, but that might have unlocked some sort of creativity synapse that you haven't unlocked before because you can go up and around the neck and that for a stage show might be interesting. I thought I'd needed to share that with you. <laughs> Sorry. And that brings us to the end of the video, which means you are in the end of the video club. To prove that you are in the end of the video club and that you've made it this far and you are part of the prestigious elite that is us. When you leave your comment on the video telling me what you thought of the itchy 10, please also include the phrase itchy and scratchy. That's probably extremely disrespectful to Itchy Cup, but um, I couldn't let it go. Sorry, sorry, genuinely sorry, but also not. It's just a bit of fun, isn't it? Anyway, um, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed yourself, maybe even learned a thing or two and either put this on your wish list or crossed it off. Either way, now you might know. Thank you to Ibanez Germany for lending me this guitar. And thank you to Dan for making all sorts of Ibanez things happen. Thanks to Ichika for creating this with Ibanez. I think it's really, really cool. Thank you to you for watching and thank you to me for the food I'm about to eat. I'm gonna enjoy it. But you could watch these videos just here and also uh, subscribe to the channel. Bye-bye.